We all remember our first time. Everyone said it would be great, unlike all of the experiences before it, and that once you experienced it, you wouldn't want to go back. But I wasn't convinced. I, I was okay going all of my life without really knowing what it was, or at least I thought I was okay with that. But eventually, I finally gave in. I at least wanted to know what it was like, even if I never experienced it again. Let's talk about my first experience with Ultra Wide. What, what, what did you think this would be about? I'm Abel Spox, your stream professor, and this is the ASUS PA34VC Ultra Wide Production Video Monitor. This is my first ultra wide monitor experience, and I kind of get the hype, but I'm also not necessarily sticking with it as my main production monitor. You might notice this isn't what my normal desk setup looks like. It's actually on my gaming side, even though specs wise, it's perfectly capable of being my main production monitor. I was quite confused as to why no one had really reviewed this monitor when I was looking into what my options were to, you know, request one for me to get to test out. And having, you know, used this for a while and I'm now reviewing it, I'm still confused why the heck no one's talking about this. So I want to. Going over some specs real quick, this monitor has a IPS panel at 3440 by 1440, 21 by 9, 100 hertz. It's a, it's a 34 inch ultra wide monitor. It weighs a ton, and we're going to talk about monitor arm solutions for it in a moment. It, <laughs> it does support HDR, but the max brightness is only like 300 or 400 nits with HDR enabled, so not a true HDR experience as everyone likes to say. It still looks great, you know, not as great maybe as at BenQ. EX2780Q, I think it was, that I reviewed. That one has those HDRI profiles. Eh. But for SDR, this actually looks really, really good. Has a DisplayPort 1.2 hookup, two HDMI 2.0B hookups, and then two Thunderbolt 3 connections. And unfortunately, these cannot be used as USB-C, which I originally thought it was, because it could have like a little USB hub. Unfortunately, it cannot. It's only Thunderbolt 3, but it does deliver 60 watts of power if you want to use it to charge your MacBook or whatever. Uh, so, unfortunately, that does kind of remove some of the PC compatibility with USB ports. We'll talk about that in a minute. It has a 1900R curve, which is important for a monitor this wide. And then, color-wise, it uh, supports 100% of the sRGB color space. It has a few other color space options quoted as, you know, what it supports. It has the ability to set and calibrate profiles within the monitor itself instead of using Windows, which is seen as a better solution and generally works out better. It supports picture-by-picture -picture modes, picture-in-picture -picture modes. I forgot to mention it is 10-bit, which is great, especially, again, for video production work, color work, photo editing, things like that. It is a beautiful monitor. Image quality-wise, just viewing angle-wise, even, like, reflection-wise, it doesn't have a whole lot of harsh reflections. Right now, I've got my big key light reflecting off of it, it is super soft and diffuse. This is a phenomenal monitor. It's also sharp. Like, it's a phenomenal monitor for video editing. And it's a much better impression than what I got of the previous Pro Art monitor that I bought and reviewed, or I bought and returned last year uh, during my monitor roulette series. This one is a lot better. It has been a thoroughly enjoyable experience. And it's been a lot of fun getting to use ultra wide in the first place. I never experienced it before. I never really thought it would be, like, worthwhile. But, unfortunately, I have run into some workflow-specific things that have prevented me from using it as my main monitor. So, for context, my main production monitors are actually dual Dell UP2718Qs, which are big 4K, HDR10, some of the best HDR10 monitors on the market right now, even though they released a couple years ago. Incredibly sharp, incredibly high quality, and incredibly accurate. And it's really made me step up my color production workflow and do a lot better job with this. And they have been phenomenal to use. But after having made all of the videos talking about how great Dell was for saving the day when my main monitor died as I was trying to upgrade and then I was left without a production monitor and they sent one out and said, we got you fam, they, st they started asking for it back. And so at some point I actually have to send it back to them despite all my claims of them giving it to me. So I was immediately kind of panicked when I found that out, trying to seek out another solution to figure this out. I was back in that monitor roulette spiral, and so this is the one that I requested. I thought I would be able to use it, but physically, it barely fits in my main space in the first place. I use, I have my own custom-made desks that are basically bolted to the wall. They're up against the wall, uh, which makes monitor mounting already kind of weird. Uh, this part is actually fairly deep, like this one, I think it's close to four feet deep, 
but my main desk side is only about two feet deep. Um, and so I don't have a whole lot of depth to work with, which means my main monitors are on a big monitor arm and pushed as far back against the wall as possible. And then I have my microphone arm behind the monitor as well. And trying to get that mounted up in that position just did not work out. I ended up actually trying to install the monitor arm in that position before realizing that it would conflict with literally everything. And so it just didn't work out. And to use some of the monitor arms, thankfully not this one. I found this one, we're gonna talk about it. It's from Arctic. Uh, but some of the monitor arms I've used just to support this much weight, they need to stick the monitor like really far out and it just wasn't working out. We're gonna talk about actual screen space workflow issues as well. Moving it over here, we're good to go. I hate using on-desk monitor stands because I feel like it eats up all of my space down here, which I've actually kept really clear right here because I've been trying to clean up my setup, make it look nicer for videos. But I usually have a lot of storage that I keep under here because it's valuable desk space. I don't have a lot of it, it's valuable. So I needed a monitor arm that could support it. And most of the monitor arms are built for monitors that are not quite this heavy and they use the gas spring system, which is great for adjusting it. I actually had a dual monitor arm here using those gas spring systems. But for a monitor of this size and this sheer weight, it is incredibly heavy. Most of those kinds of monitor arms don't work. So I reached out and ended up partnering with Arctic to check out their Z1 Pro monitor arm because it was one of the few that I could find that was built for this size. And actually it supports monitors up to 33 pounds, which is really, really heavy. You can go up to 38 inch ultra wide monitors and up to 34 inch 16 by nine monitors. And again, up to 33 pounds. You could theoretically squeeze a bigger monitor on there if it was under the weight limit. That's usually how that works. And instead of using the gas you know, lift system, it has an actual bendy arm that just stays rigid locked in one place. And so I have it very high up on the arm because I like to keep, you know, the top third of my monitor at eye level. That is what's most comfortable ergonomically for me. There's a lot of workflow, you know, a lot of ergonomics with that, with eye positioning and keeping it, you know, really where you want it. And then it has a very sturdy pull. This thing is held in place. It's not going anywhere unless I specifically want it to, which is phenomenal. All the other monitor arms I was working with and trying to use, I'd come back one day and the monitor was just basically falling over onto my desk because it, Eventually the support gave out. This one has full tilt and pivot controls for where you want the monitor to be angled. You can pull it out, push it back in, and you can raise it up and down on this giant pole. And then it has a active high-speed USB hub built into the base, which makes up a little bit for the monitor itself, not having a USB hub. So it makes my life a lot easier for having a literal second set of peripherals. I've got a mouse and keyboard, a stream deck, and things like that hooked up here that I need to connect back to my computer because I have this secondary gaming setup. And this has saved me a lot of time. Setup of the monitor arm was super easy, super simple. Uh, the only thing I ran into was the actual desk clamp. You have to screw the clamp base into the flat part where the uh, USB hub goes. And it just like the tolerances were a little loose, so it wasn't exactly lined up. And I had to really crank on it for a while to get it tightened in. But the overall setup process was super easy. I had to do it twice because I ended up moving which side of the desk it was on. Not a big deal. I'm a big fan, so I'll have a link to that monitor arm in the description below. It may seem silly to have spent so much time on that one particular piece, but again, I have I, have, I went through many different monitor arms thinking I found the right one, and this one is the only one that really does quite what I want, and I've had a lot of questions about how the heck do you support a monitor that heavy, because other people have ran into that trouble. So as far as using an ultra wide goes, what is that experience like? Well, it's great. For productivity, for gaming, there is a lot you can do with it. You can sort of get extra windows pulled up there. Again, it's not, I'm a, I'm a dual monitor guy and I like using that workflow. I am very habitually built for having my monitor separated that way because I've done it for like 10 years, whereas ultra wides are new to me. I have ran into a lot of frustration with there not being a lot of support for window management on ultra wide. Windows, you know, snap and things like that was a really revolutionary, you know, support feature when it was added to Windows 7 but it hasn't been updated for ultra wide. So I don't have any easy ways to quickly like snap windows to exactly the middle or to exactly a 16 by nine frame or to do like triple side monitors or windows. And I'm not really doing anything workflow rise where I like, I pretty much always maximize my windows unless it's a discord chat. And so having that extra screen space for that kind of thing doesn't actually benefit me very much. And then I run into issues like the taskbar and the title bars for windows and browser tabs and stuff like that. Feels like I'm slowly losing more and more vertical space when that's not what I want. I'm, I was actually a massive fan of 16 by 10 monitors because in my honest opinion, even after having used ultra wides, I think for a lot of actual productivity purposes and not just gaming that 
more vertical space is more beneficial than more horizontal space. I believe that three by two and 16 by 10 displays are some of the best per, you know, productivity displays on the market and ultra wide only caters to a couple specific workflows. And like, it was really nice for timeline editing, you know, in a video editor, but for all other workflows, not so much. Thankfully, I didn't notice the curve too much, so that wasn't a big problem. But I mean, I did enjoy it, especially when editing and Resolve, going back to my 16 by nine monitors, I really did start to miss it. And that was unfortunate. But overall, eh. And then there's some specific issues related to my specific workflow as a content creator that primarily relies on screen recording. In that, by being 3440 by 1440, I was going back from 200% DPI scaling in Windows to 100% on this, which meant when I'm doing screen captures and zooming in on a bunch of screen space, which I had to do even more because of the aspect ratio, things were a lot more blurry. Even recording at 444 chroma subsampling, things get a lot more blurry and Halo-y because it doesn't have that extra sharpness and clarity from the higher DPI scaling. And that was a big problem. Like suddenly I felt like the quality of my screen recordings for something that no one else really notices but me probably, but it is something that is a standard of my work that I wish to maintain. You know, it is important to me. I felt like that quality just kind of suddenly fell out from under me. And then combined with the fact that it is a wider aspect ratio, like I had to manually try to resize windows to take up an equivalent 16 by nine space. So when I screen capped, I could crop in on it because I'm not just gonna make tutorials in ultra wide because that would eliminate the viewability for much of my audience. And you know, it would be really obnoxious to watch. So there are a lot of specific hiccups that yeah, for gaming, it's great. If I wasn't a content creator doing screen capture stuff, I wouldn't use the, you know, I wouldn't even hesitate to switch to this full time. But as someone who does rely on those things, it's pretty much a no go. Now I will mention in terms of window positioning and management, there is, you know, there, there's some tools available that you can use in script up, such as display fusion to really, you know, manage yourself. And actually there's a channel by the fellow named David Zhang, who does a fantastic job of putting all of that together and showing you his ultra wide workflow and a lot. Really good stuff there, I highly recommend it. But so much of the setup was a headache and it was just so much like it was easier for me to just keep working and manually resizing windows than to try to get that all set up the way I like because every time I tried, it just, I wasn't quite getting the exact results and there weren't really presets for exactly what I wanted. So overall, this monitor is phenomenal. It is super pricey, but if you're looking for, you know, a blend of a gaming 100 Hertz adaptive sync experience in ultra wide with a super, you know, high quality video production workflow kind of monitor, this is it. I don't understand why no one else is reviewing this. I could barely find any videos on it. It is a phenomenal monitor. This is the choice to go with. But if you're in my particular area with my particular needs, there's some workflow considerations to really keep in mind here. Thank you so much for watching my review. Product links, as always, will be in the description below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education. I'm Eposfox, your stream professor. I'll see you next time.